Well, this is a common question that people have, as though there were a separate God of the Old Testament and the New Testament. In the, in the Old Testament, you have a God of judgment and war, but in the New Testament, you have a God of love and peace. And it can seem hard to uh, reconcile those two seemingly opposing views of God. But I don't think we need to be too worried about this distinction because I believe you can see God's love and mercy and kindness and goodness and his wrath and judgment in both Testaments, the Old Testament and the New Testament. Now, it's true that in the Old Testament, there seems to be an emphasis on judgment. There are numerous people groups, actually, including Israel, who are judged for their sin. But there are also numerous examples of God's uh, judgment in the New Testament as well. In fact, several examples come to my mind rather quickly. Uh, for instance, when Ananias and Sapphira were judged and they were actually killed immediately by God for lying to the Holy Spirit. Also, you have Paul telling the Corinthians that there are some in their church who are being judged by God and even dying because they're observing communion wrongly. And you also have Paul's description in Thessalonians of how the coming Christ completely and utterly destroys his enemies and those who do not know God. And then finally, in the book of Revelation, you see Jesus as this conquering king who has come to exact vengeance on his enemies. And these are all a part of our New Testament faith. I mean, this is, this is the same God of the Old Testament and the New Testament that we read about in the entire Bible. And if you read the, the Bible carefully and without being caught off guard by you know, a caricature of God, you will see that he is the same God through the entire book. A good and a kind God whose steadfast love extends to a thousand generations of those who love him, but who also by no means will clear the guilty. Uh, and the whole book, both Testaments, old and new, point us to this God and ultimately to his redemption in Christ. And when it comes to David in particular, it's also true that he did some absolutely reprehensible things. He was guilty of murder, he was uh, an adulterer, he was a womanizer, just to name a few. Well, then how does the Bible call him a man after God's own heart, even if he's done all of these horrible things? Well, the description of David as a man after God's own heart doesn't describe his his moral perfection, if you will, but rather his propensity to repent when he does sin and he's made aware of it. Because uh, David did fall in sin in some, some very drastic, profound ways. But every time he did, he turned from it. He repented. He acknowledged his sin. He asked God's forgiveness. And he turned once again to follow God and pursue righteousness. That is what makes David a man after God's own heart. Not his moral perfection. Not that he was perfect in everything he did. But in his spirit, his repentant spirit, his willingness to acknowledge and turn from his sin and pursue God's uh, justice and righteousness. And the same thing is true for us today. None of us are particularly people after God's own heart because we're morally perfect, uh, because we pretty clearly aren't morally perfect. What makes a person a godly Christian is that they are pursuing holiness by turning from sin and seeking after God's righteousness. And, and that is the message of Scripture throughout the Bible, whether you're in the Old Testament or the New Testament. Sin is serious, God is holy, and God redeems people by his grace. And uh, as New Testament Christians, God redeems us, again, through his grace in Christ as, as uh, we, we remember the cross and what God has done for us. Uh, his judgment, his wrath falling down on the cross on Christ, his wrath for sin, but also immediately after his grace, his forgiveness that is given to all those who will call out to him. That's the message of the entire Bible, no matter where you look in it. And that is the God of the entire Bible.